Welcome to this short training video for those who are going to be judging the computer sciences category. First of all, as a start, I would strongly recommend that you download the Expo Guide from the Expo Sciences Resources page. The URL is there. And study pages 43 to 47. These apply to engineering or computer science type projects and a lot of valuable background information as to what is expected from this type of project is provided. Before you judge the method section, it is very strongly recommended that you read page 46, headed Computer Science Method. Just some notes. You may or may not be aware that the computer science category has four subcategories data management, data science, networking, and software development. The type of project you most likely to have to judge will be either data science or software development. Data management and networking projects are somewhat rare. Note also that there can be some overlap between these subcategories. For example, a data science pro project would in all likelihood involve coding either in R or in Python. And the software development, developing an app, might involve some aspect of database or of data management through linking to a, either my SQL or Access database, for example. In the sections that follow, we're going to look at the various headings on the assessment form. And I've highlighted areas of the various items which apply to specifically to computer science type projects. In the introduction, Items 1, 2, 3, and 4 essentially are the same for all categories of projects. However, number 5 refers to engineering goals or design goals. Now, design goals apply to the computer science projects. So that particular item should be read, design goals are correct, achievable, and measurable. Just a note about two things mentioned there which are different and can sometimes be confused. The aim which the learner writes will stem from the problem or the research question. The design goal, on the other hand, will speak to how the computers, how computer science in one or other of those subcategories will help solve the problem. In the method section, there you will see the word prototype appears on more than one occasion. Prototypes do not apply to computer science projects. They are specific to engineering projects. Um, so for item number six, it should read design criteria of programs or codes slash platforms are clear and aligned to goals. Prototypes and processes belong in the engineering section. Item number seven, procedure includes types of materials, measurements, and units. That is unlikely to be relevant in a computer science project, however, understands different coding interfaces and platforms. It's specifically intended for computer science projects. Item number eight, you don't need the word prototypes. We replace it with solutions, which illustrated unlikely with diagrams plans, but flowcharts may be used. What is required there is some kind of description of the algorithm used, particularly in a, a, a software, software development type project. It doesn't only have to be a flowchart, it could be a verbal description of an algorithm, it could be pseudocode. What is, appears there would also depend on the subcategory. Okay, number of trials, testing, 
of prototypes does not apply, but the number of trials, of the code, and platforms adequate and accurate. And then number 10, it's important that you refer to that page that I mentioned earlier on the Expo Guide. Okay, here we're looking with computer science different approaches, but probably not materials, possibly processes, in the case of a data science project. And methods. For point number nine, look for stepwise development of a solution and look for testing of that solution. And it's in a data science project, have they got a sufficiently large data set which they can use a certain percentage for training the model and then a smaller subset for testing the model. If there's code written, that code needs to be tested with both appropriate and inappropriate data to ensure that error correction and robust code is developed and so on. Under the results section, the item number 11, it's unlikely that there will be circuits. There could be diagrams, there could be graphs, there could be tables, and there will almost certainly have to be descriptions, depending on the nature of the project. Number 12 will apply to any type of project. Number 13, we'll be looking there at the final code platform and making sure that it works and is aligned to the design goal. Number 14, it's the feasibility of the final code platform is discussed and so on. Number 15, is relevant to whatever type of project you're doing. Number 16, the discussion will cite relevant literature and compare the solutions to other studies, not prototypes. Similarly, number 17, the significance, value and benefits of the solutions are explained. Some notes about that. It's important that the results should link back to the design goal. How are they going to use computer science to solve a problem? These results need to be discussed in detail, not merely a short paragraph. And where they're required to compare existing solutions, it's almost certain that the learner should be referring back to their literature review. Originality, this is a section which is common to all four types, all four assessment forms. But there are some comments that apply specifically to computer science. In terms of ethics, as with any other project, if the image is used, they should all be referenced. If it's accessed from the internet, a URL should be added to the caption. If it's an image that the learner took, took themselves or created themselves, they must acknowledge that in the caption and indicate that they, they were responsible for the graphic. As far as a new or improved solution is concerned, they need to justify that by referring to the literature review. common problem with ethics that can cause some confusion with computer science projects is that of brand names. Names of coding languages, for example, Python, um, C Sharp, C++, can be mentioned. In, in fact, they should. 
be aware that there's a lot of code freely available on the internet. If a learner has used this code, it should be acknowledged and correctly referenced. If the code has been used as is, this must be clearly stated. And if the code has been adapted, the changes should be described very clearly in the method section. It's important as a judge of this particular category of project that you actually do a little bit of looking around on Google to see if the code isn't there already and then check to see that the citations and acknowledgements have in fact been done. If not, you need to flag that as an ethical violation. The written presentation again is the same across all of the types of project. Just a couple of comments. In-text referring, referencing is often missing. Um, that, that is particularly in the case where you have younger learners in grade 6, 7 and 8, eight 9. They're not that familiar with the concept of, in, of in-text referencing and citations. Um, if it is missing under, under item number 24, do not penalize them too harshly if the in-text referencing is the only thing is missing. In other words, that's not a justification for giving them one out of four. A score of two or three would be more appropriate. Also, the expected referencing style for Expo, according to the guidebook, is the Harvard style. However, if they have used another referencing style correctly, for example, ATP again, do not penalize them too harshly. In other words, it's not a reason to give them zero or one as a score for that section. Thank you.